this beautiful day. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. It's lovely to see all your smiling faces and to rejoice in the fact that we are even more perfect when we're gathered, including all of our friends on the internet, than when we're alone. So um, we've got Bill Hoffman as our special musician, and we have our wonderful Rick, and Marita will be giving our message today. So don't forget to turn your phones down so you get the whole thing. And let's stand and sing our joy song together. <laughs> sunny day and uh, gathering together for a special cause. Thank you for being here and thank you so much also for those of you who are looking in on the internet today. Well, my Bible quote, and they've been pretty consistently the last few weeks, they've been about gratitude. We need to do more of that. Think about the things that are happening to us with gratitude, because there is an even procession of blessings that come along day by day, and we've gotten so used to them, we just don't even see them. <clears throat> but when we give ourselves a chance to think about them, to consider <clears throat> the um, whole blessings that we take for granted, Well, we're missing a bit because we know that what we're grateful for, actively grateful for, attracts more reasons to be grateful. Yet more blessings come. Psalm 28 7 says, The Lord is my strength and shield, in him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song, I give thanks to him. Oh, you don't have to sing it, but you can think it, and you can feel it. And you are pushing a button. You're pushing a spiritual button that always has a response, a positive response. Let's, let's continue to... Remember to give thanks. Our statement of being this morning is <clears throat> as it is every Sunday morning. <laughs> and it covers the things that are so important 
that we believe in, that we affirm, that we try to live by in divine science. Shall we say it together? God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God and an ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. Bill is going to treat us with this lovely music. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Does everybody acknowledge this beautiful fall morning? Yes. So we're going to uh, wave goodbye to summer. <coughs> and I'm going to play a tune called Wave. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Mel. Just right for an early fall morning. <clears throat> well, now is the time in our service when we just quiet down, get still, go within. Sometimes life permits us these pockets of time to do that, and sometimes it doesn't. But they're valuable whenever we can give ourselves over to peace, to unwind physically and mentally, to sink moment by moment, muscle by muscle, more deeply into relaxation and peace, inner stillness for it is at times like this that we begin more deeply to tune into what we are and where we are. Where we are is in the midst of the presence of God. What we are is his beloved, his children, his image, his focus, his unconditional love. Those of us who have children indeed love our children. Sometimes they make mistakes, but uh, that's life. God looks at us and doesn't see mistakes ever. What God sees is growth, progress deepening of understanding, a tuning in to the real. God sees us in far clearer terms than we see our own children. beholds what he has created within us. Children of the Most High. Souls in progress. Souls endowed with far more power and beauty. Far more understanding and peace and love and joy and good than we can possibly imagine. Let's identify ourselves as God sees us. For in doing so, we are tapping an inexhaustible energy, wisdom, truth that we can use to cope with, to understand, and to defeat, rise up over whatever challenges us. I am the child of God, and whatever stands in my mind as big, as difficult, right there, right there, I know who and what I am, and 
the presence of God be fully within me, within the situation, within my life as a whole. In the 90 seconds that we will have right now, let us bring God into that challenge. Let us bring our spiritual dimension, mental, emotional dimension, into that truth. God reigns. God reigns. You reign with God. Look at whatever that is through those eyes. Starting now. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's accept the invitation. Let's take ourselves and all our mental and emotional baggage, all our mental and emotional joys, the total self, let us take it into an awareness of God right here, right now, our friend, our lover, our beloved who is helping us, always, always, always. Amen. <coughs> Shall we say the Lord's Prayer, the, the translation from the Aramaic, from the language of Jesus. Together. Our Father, who is everywhere, your name is sacred, your kingdom is come, your will is throughout the earth, even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our need for bread from day to day, and you forgive our offenses even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not enter into materialism, but you separate us from error, because yours are the kingdom, the power, the song, and the praise from all ages, throughout all ages, sealed in faith, trust, and truth.
Well, <clears throat> today I'm going to be talking about I can't afford it. <laughs> that comes to John Burring sometimes. <laughs> A lot of years ago, uh, before we moved from the little house we were living in uh, on Fleetwood Drive into uh, my present home, I had a very, very vivid dream, and I've always remembered it. Now, in this dream, a Boy Scout came to the door. He was in his uniform, looking very official. And he was selling hams for the Scouts. And I was interested, of course, I mean, you want to support your Boy Scouts, you know, the kids around a lot that are doing that, that wonderful thing for themselves. And uh, so I listened carefully to his whole presentation, and then I asked, uh, and how much are they? And he gave me the price, and in this very vivid dream, I, I was a little shocked because it was so high. And I answered, oh, that's too much. I can't afford that. Well, right at that point, I woke up. It seemed to me that something inside me was trying to warn me in that dream. I had already found out the hard way that eating beef for me caused terrible headaches, sick headaches. I, I, would, I would just go to bed. That's what I would have to do. And I remember much, oh, just within the last few years, my oldest daughter was, was saying to me, um, I was so scared when you did that because I thought you might have cancer in your brain. Of course, it put her to that. But I found out that that was the cause of the sick headaches. I stopped eating beef and called my father and told him about it. And he had been having headaches <coughs> all his life. And I told him that uh, this worked for me. He stopped eating beef and he stopped having headaches. So it's something metabolic, I guess, or something. Um, but this dream seemed to be warning me that I just needed to avoid meat, period. Uh, and I listened. Oh, I listened carefully. <laughs> and I believe, I really believe that I've saved myself a lot of physical problems. I, apparently, I don't metabolize it right. And I... Um, Gave it up totally. I, I, I don't miss meat. I eat fish. Yeah, it works fine for me. Now, this inner warning, at least I see it because it was such a vivid dream, was addressing a very real physical problem. But there are other things that we can't afford, especially if we are motivated to live a more spiritually oriented life. I was reading one of H.B. Jeffrey's books very recently, and I found that some things he was saying I agreed with 100%. It just made good sense. And I, I wanted to share those with you, hear what he was saying. Many people believe in God, but very few people know God. Many people attend religious services and ceremonies. A lot fewer these days than that. <laughs> Many people have religious longings and spiritual uplifts and pray to God every day. But this does not mean that they know God. Only the few know and understand that God is real. God is actual. The many believe that there must be such a being, but they are not conscious of that being. They don't feel the touch of the infinite, and they don't hear the voice of the eternal. Now, in your estimation, doesn't that sound the way it generally is with a lot of people? In divine science, we say it over and over that God is omnipresent. Divine energy is the basic energy from which the universe and everything in it has come. So God is everywhere. We exist in this sea of divinity, and we're totally unaware of it. 
when we inwardly begin to process, internalize, believe, agree with the truth of an omnipresent God, an omnipresent good. Well, if we ever had any fear of God, and some of us have been taught from very early on to be fearful of God, well, that fear disappears. It's gone. Hell is rightly seen as a concept created by organizations to exercise power, to uh, control people. You're going to go to hell if you don't do this. That's a very powerful, fearful idea. But on the other hand, how could, how could a God of love have created a place of eternal punishment? A God of love? God is a being of infinite power and unconditional love. Not angry, never angry, never seeking revenge against us sinners. Mm -mm. God didn't make any mistakes when he created us. We are not sinners. No. God created us in his image. God created us created us good and very good. Oh, we can stand tall, we can stand firm and, and proud and grateful for the infinite potential that God has put within us, his own image, his own image within us, available to us. In divine science, we uh, talk about the laws of mind, that like attracts like, like creates like, as you sow, so shall you reap. Very important spiritual laws. What that tells us is that whatever we hold in mind, what we ever, whatever we habitually think about, those patterns of thought, those attitudes and the behaviors that come from it, we attract to ourselves. Oh, okay. So, we need to watch what we're thinking. We need to listen to what's going on in our heads. We need to be aware of the attitudes and behaviors that we have toward other people because uh -oh, sooner or later, we are going to find ourselves reaping <coughs> what we have sown. <coughs> When we've gotten those ideas firmly in mind, and we do that inner work that's needed on our negative thinking, boy, can it make a difference. Wonderful, positive changes can come into our lives. Health improves. You're not worrying. You're not anxious like you were or fearful. We find ourselves experiencing more prosperity. Uh, our work conditions, our interpersonal relationships improve and they become more harmonious and uplifting. And life is just more fun. It's just good, that's all. Special people, special opportunities seem to float into our experience, into our lives. And wonderful positive changes. We're, we're just happier in mind and find all sorts of reasons for that happiness. Now, we regularly hear this sort of stuff when we sit through a divine science service. Sometimes we're excited about these new ideas, especially when they are new to us. Uh, ideas about watching our thoughts. Or, and you know, when we feel like, I'd like to try that. I, I would really want to see if this stuff works. Nobody says believe anything we say. Try it. Just try it. See if it does work for you. And uh, sometimes um, we hear about them. We say to ourselves, you know, that's interesting. That I might want to try that sometime. And we're not particularly motivated to start doing some of that inner work. But whatever attitude we have toward these ideas, we've heard them. 
We've heard about them. We've heard they do work. And so, you know, sometime down the road when we feel like we need a boost, when things are not looking really great, maybe that's the time we might use those ideas. The same is true with our relationship with God. Just, just like H.P. Jeffers said, many people believe in God, but very few know him. Well, obviously you believe in God. You wouldn't be sitting in this room today or listening to this talk over the internet. The question becomes, are you content in just believing or are you interested in knowing God? Are you interested in experiencing God's unconditional love? Are you interested possibly in developing a deep emotional connection, a relationship <coughs> with God? The difference is like having kind of a casual friend you see once in a while, and you, you always greet them warmly when you see them in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, having someone you want to be with as often as possible. Someone whom you respect and admire and love deeply and miss so much when you're not around them. That kind of an emotional bond and connection. See, the difference just between a casual friend and someone you're deeply interested in, you deeply love. Mm. A couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> I talked about working on a relationship with God. And what you do is you turn within. You identified God as being within you, because God is as fully present in you as he is in the whole universe. God is within, no, no, no questions. Once we start talking to God within us, and most of us have talked to God somewhere out here, at least I did for a long time. Once we talk to God in here, it could be the beginning of something so real, so vibrant, that we <coughs> really begin feeling and experiencing God, knowing God, just not assuming it was somewhere else or something else. I suggested saying to God, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And of course, that was, that was based on an experience Nona Brooks had, who started saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, not feeling it, but saying it about a woman who was a thorn in her side and just saying it silently within herself changed the relationship dramatically, 180 degrees, just, just in, in saying inside herself, I love you, I love you. She didn't love her, but she kept saying it, and somehow the feelings changed. The dynamics between them somehow changed, and there wasn't any more problem with this woman. The problem was solved. The reason why she'd been a thorn in her side was eliminated. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Say those words and see, even if they're empty at first, See if they don't, after a while, begin to generate a warmth, a sense of connection. It's the beginning of something that can grow and grow and grow increasingly into a relationship, a friendship with God. And then 
a love affair with God. That experience can bring more good into our lives than we can ever imagine. But what has this to do with the title of my talk today? That seems pretty far away. We can't afford it. What can't we afford if, if we truly want to know God? The Bible has made a very clear point. First John has made abundantly clear that point. In John, uh, 1 John 4.20 it says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And then in 2.11, whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. And finally, in 1 John 2.9, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Now, this, this reference to a brother in Aramaic means any person they know, not just a family member. So we can't afford to hate anyone. And that, that's pretty extreme. But we can't afford either to look down on or judge or feel negatively disposed toward anyone we know or somebody we know of doesn't matter how large or small their error in words or in behavior might have been. It doesn't matter. More often than not, behavior that doesn't meet our standards was caused by acute personal problems that they were experiencing, and they just happened to splash up on us. It wasn't really meant for us, but it, it, it landed in our lap. Perhaps a negative, <coughs> abusive childhood could be blamed for, for what they feel or said or did. Maybe painful or frightening things that happened to them in the past and toward which they were still reacting. If we just knew the full picture, we would, instead of hating or disliking or condemning or finding fault, instead of that, we would feel compassion, sadness, rather than antagonism or, or condemnation for them. If we knew the whole picture, you know, we simply cannot afford any negative feelings toward anyone, toward anyone. Now that takes work. That definitely takes some work on ourselves. To release, to forgive, to neutralize negative feelings toward anyone if if we want to know, feel, experience that sublime presence of God. God loves unconditionally. And we have to learn to do that too. Now, this also applies to people who have harmed the people we love. It applies to the leadership of the other political party. Mm -hmm. We can't even afford to hate the heads of totalitarian governments that see our country as an enemy, like Vladimir Putin. You look at his behavior, and it's appalling. But our feelings have to include compassion for the awful experiences he must have had 
that made him able to make the decisions he has made. Compassion. Marty Dow of the Institute of, um, what is it? Creative Living, Institute of Creative Living. She wrote some excellent instructions on forgiving and releasing another person. And it's called, Let Love Transform Your Life. And uh, if you wouldn't mind handing these out, what I'm going to ask you to do is we'll read them out loud together so you won't <coughs> We'll have to wait until you get home. <coughs> Put it on the, uh, <coughs> the table, kitchen table. Okay. Thank you. Give me one too. Looks like I've been here to the collector. I thank you. I thank you. Okay, let's let's read it out loud to ourselves. Oh, out loud. Think of a relationship you would like to change. Sit for a moment with your eyes closed and allow yourself to relax. Take a few deep breaths. Picture the person in your mind's eye. It does not matter if you can see an actual image or not. Just keep them in your thoughts. Imagine them surrounded with love and light. You can use the pink blanket of love as a symbol. See them surrounded by this beautiful pinkness, which is caressing them with love. See the two of you interacting in the way you would like. See both of you smiling as you are conversing. Feel a positive emotion like joy as you watch this image. Smile to yourself. Imagine yourself telling a friend about this wonderful change of events with this person and how happy you are that things are different. See yourself joyfully celebrating the transformation of this relationship or situation. Feel the joy. Now let it go. Repeat this experiment every day until you feel the tension leaving and you feel that you are able to do this without any negative feelings at all and have actually developed some compassion for this person. At some point, you will be given the opportunity to witness the change between the two of you or in any situation. It will not be a surprise. Look for the miracle of love. Now, those are some very good ideas. And by the way, if there's anybody who sees this over the internet and would like a copy of this, just call the church and uh, give us your name and address and we'll send you a copy, okay? So I, I do urge you to use this practical, beautiful way of transforming negative memories, negative feelings, angry feelings, hurt feelings toward anyone, someone, many people perhaps. Resentments, offenses, emotions, things that have really hurt you. You know, even when they're seldom remembered, they do linger in the subconscious mind. And they are a block to greater spiritual growth, to experiencing the presence of God. So, release, release, keep on releasing. Let's go with it. Oh, yes. There is something within that wants that relationship with God, that wants to know God, to feel, to understand, to experience the beauty, the love, 
the uplift, the healing inside and outside. It's worth the effort. It's worth working on ourselves. <clears throat> it's worth clearing the mind of any feelings of hatred, criticism, condemnation. If we knew the whole picture, we would feel differently. Oh, Father, oh, beloved one, thank you for your help, your constant, instant help in doing this. As we wave goodbye to summer, we're going to say hello to autumn. So I'll play autumn leaves. <laughs>
true bill. That was great. Shall we now bless the gifts? The gifts that we receive, the gifts that we give. <coughs> it is a process. <coughs> we give out, we give back, get back. And so now we remind ourselves of this great law. Bless you with the gifts. Today, Today I acknowledge God, God omnipresent, at the source of all good, as the source of my good. With this acknowledgement, I accept God's will, which is abundance in every aspect of my life. I release all thoughts of lack and limitation, and I am open and receptive to the increased flow of abundance to you right now. I joyfully accept the gifts of life and, and give freely of the special gift that I am. Through me, God omnipresent blesses and multiplies this gift for all. Thank you, dear God. And I believe that we're going to have a few announcements. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Bill, for that beautiful music. And I like a good old summertime, <laughs> as all of y'all know. So I'll be out here next week with my wool coat. Yes. Hat. Exactly. <laughs> so that's all right, though. I had my share of hot weather. I'll let y'all have this cold weather. So mm -hmm. uh, the flowers today are sponsored by Judy Mason for her birthday. Uh, she's supposed to be going out of town today, so I'll get in touch with her to see what she wants me to do with them. So um, don't take them until I get permission to take them. So. Uh, anyhow, but I would so appreciate uh, Judy doing that and happy birthday to her. Uh, as you know, uh, we had talked uh, earlier in the year that we were going to get an AED to put in, and we finally got it, and Joey installed it this week, and mm -hmm. thank you very much for doing that. So um, it's pretty self explanatory from what I understand. Uh, so uh, hopefully we will never ever need it, but if we do, it is here. So anyhow, thank you to Joey for doing that. The cost of it was about $1,900, so if anybody wants to donate some extra money to help pay for that, uh, feel free to do so. We always take the money if you want to donate some extra money, <laughs> so uh, we appreciate that. Um, also, uh, we collected money on what Marita had asked for instead of gifts for her birthday. She wanted money to be donated to the church, so we're going to leave the box out again today, and then later on this afternoon, the board will get together and take it all out and tell it and let everybody know what we got. So we really appreciate the people that donated, even the ones that didn't, and we appreciate all the birthday wishes. And I was thinking this morning, boy, yesterday, I'm glad we had a party the week before, because yesterday would have been, not been so wonderful. So uh, everything's in, within the water, so we feel very good. So thank you. Um, let's see here. What else did I want to say? Um, coming up in October, uh, the second Sunday in October, um, we'll be speaking next week. Next week let me speak in the second week in October, and he has asked to have the message over at Oak Grove Plaza, I mean, Oak Grove um, Park, where we had the party. So the service that morning will be at uh, Oak Grove Park, and I will announce it again next week, but he wants to have the service over there, so we're going to try a little something different and weather permitting, that we don't have snow or something, but when weather permitting, we're going to have it up there and do a little something different for him, a change. Who knows what else we might have coming up different. So uh, anyhow, and uh, coming up also, uh, in the future, uh, you know, we've always got a project going on. So the next project is going to be, uh, and I know y'all don't agree with this, but this carpet needs to be replaced. Yes. <laughs> if anybody has looked at it lately, and I think it must be the original carpet, because I've been here 27 years and it has not been replaced since I was here. So, <laughs> so that was go that's going to be our project for next year. And, and so we had, we're doing some fundraisers or whatever, and we'll be getting some measurements and the you know, approximate cost or whatever. But that is going to be our project for next year, so get this carpet in place. So, um, so that's going to be in the making. So if anybody's got any suggestions or whatever, feel free to do that and let us know. Um, let's see, one other thing. Um, I know that I'm always trying to thank people for what they do, and I can't ever thank everybody, but this church functions on everybody helping. And that's one thing I'm very grateful for is that this church, you know, you can ask for something, and if somebody can't do it, they know somebody that will. But anyhow, everybody's always willing to jump in and help. And I'm very grateful for the people that helped last weekend with the party. They jumped in, took care of everything. So I'm very grateful for that. But on a weekly, daily basis, we have people that take care of everything around this, this church. And we especially wanted to thank Jerry 
again for taking care of the sheds. He's done a beautiful job on the sheds. He takes care of all the electrical work that needs to be done and all the plumbing work that needs to be done. There's little things that make this church go that people don't even know happen. So we, we do appreciate all that you do. And I'm not going to get you to stand up and come up here, but we got a little something for you. So we just want to say thank you for, for all that you do. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have made you come up front. <laughs> thank you, Jerry. Yes, we're very, we're very, very, very grateful for them. And, and uh, he just, uh, whatever needs to be done, he just does it and, and takes care of us. So we're very grateful for that. And uh, as I'm grateful for everybody in this church that does everything that uh, needs to be done. So, um, anyhow, uh, you got anything uh, going on? Yes, there was one thing, I, and you had mentioned it before as well. Um, when you drive along Carriage Drive, you'll see some um, beautiful trees that with, they look like little pumpkins, little orange pumpkins. Um, they're called Chinese, uh, no, Japanese rain trees, I believe. And uh, they were planted in honor of my husband about four and a half years ago, and they are looking just great. Please take a look at them as you drive past, because they're worth looking at. They really are. Yeah, they're called, uh, I think Jackie said they're called golden rain. Golden, golden rain. rain trees. Yeah. So yeah, they are very beautiful, yes. Yeah. We had a lady call from, uh, she drives by here, she lives in Bedford, and she called and wanted to know what kind of trees, because she wants to plant some of her property. So you know, that's how I know the name of them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are very, very beautiful. So. Yeah. And uh, I think it's on Brandon Avenue, uh, as you're going towards Salem, if you, if you um, go up um, um, 419, and you turn left to go to Salem, there, there are some of them in there. That's okay. where I first saw them, Okay. decided I'd like to see them here planted for, in honor of my husband. And but be sure to look at them, okay? There you go. Yes, thank you. There are a lot of people, more than you would imagine, who call, who email, and ask for prayers. And um, there are those of us on the prayer team who regularly get lists of not names, just initials. And there are a bunch of them in here. And so let's Right now, as we pray for all of these people uh, who are experiencing war and privation and floods and uh, earthquakes, in addition to uh, consternation and difficulty in the, the country itself. Famine. Uh, let us hold them as well as all of these dear people who have asked for our prayer help. Let us hold them all in prayer as we say the prayer of protection. We include the whole family of humankind, not just these people that you just saw in the list. Keeping those, all those people in mind, shall we say this prayer together? The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. The mind of God guides you. The power of God abides in you. The strength of God renews you wherever you are. God is, and all is well. Our blessing goes out to the whole world. And now shall we say some special prayers for our own country because there is controversy, there is difficulties. We read about it in the paper and Hear about it on the news. One thing or many things. Let us go within now and begin thanking God in advance. Thanking God in advance for the perfect solutions 
harmonious interactions, the creative thoughts that they bring forth. God reigns. And let us affirm that in the next 60 seconds. Thank you that it is so. Amen.